We've only touched upon some of the many classic gaming consoles like the Atari 2600, but now it's time to introduce you to two of its competitors. Feeling down and dirty, feeling kind of me. Exhibit A, the Intellivision. I've been from one to another extreme. Exhibit B, the ColecoVision. This time I had a good time, ain't got time to wait. Both tried to take down Atari and both had a similar library of games. I wanna stick around till I can't see straight. It's like today, you got all these games, you don't know which way to look. First, we're going to talk about the Intellivision. It was test marketed in 1979, but officially released in 1980. Notice its fine wood texture. Everything back then was made of wood. You know the Stone Age? Well, that was the Wood Age. The Intellivision came from Mattel Electronics. Now, you know what else they made? The Power Glove. Now, that's a bad sign right there, but it was a great game system for its time. Now, I'm going to whip through a bunch of random games, mostly shitty ones, but I'm going to tell you right now, I have three common complaints. Number one, many of the games are very similar to other games, and often they're blatant copies. Number two, without instructions, they're difficult to understand how to play. Number three, the controls suck ass. And in this regard, the main problem is the controllers. Why a numeric keypad? This is a video game controller, not a phone. Then there's two little buttons on each side, which are usually the fire buttons. It's awkward to handle. And rather than a joystick or a control pad of some kind, you get this weird disc. Sometimes in the heat of the game, you can actually jam your fingernail on it. It also acts as a button, so in total, that's 17 buttons. And for games this complex, you really need that many. When you pop in a game, the first thing you do is try every button before you figure out which ones do anything. Most of them don't do jack shit, and it's different for each game. That's why many of the games come with overlays. You slide it over the keys, and now you can see what they do. It helps out, but damn, what a shit little fuck. And the games barely fit in the cartridge slot. It's like trying to stick your dick in a Cheerio. So this is Space Battle. Sounds promising enough, but... Okay, what's this? None of the buttons do anything but make fart noises. And the overlay has a bunch of Triforces. Is this where they came from? All you gotta do is wait for the squadrons to meet the aliens, and then it brings up the battle screen where you shoot blueberry pancakes. This should be the whole game. Why does this part even exist? Next, uh, I don't know, let's try Mission X. More like Mission Ass. It's a 2D shooter, but it's real hard to shoot things. I mean, you have to be at the exact altitude. Two rises up and eight goes down, and the fire buttons are on the side. I mean, that's great, right? Why not spread the buttons out as much as possible? All right, what's next? How about Utopia? It's kind of a precursor to SimCity. You're basically the god of an island. You build stuff and storms come by and, uh, wow. All I can say is that back in 1981, people had a lot more imagination. Okay, how about He-Man? Oh man, I thought it was gonna be He-Man. So you're flying around in the Wind Raider, shooting at stuff. I think on the ground, that's Skeletor. You drop bombs on him and that's it. Wait, did I just call that white square a bomb? See, that's using your imagination. Vectron. In the 80s, everything was Tron. Megatron, Voltron, Tron the movie. You get the idea. This is a weird, weird game. The first challenge is to figure out which of these indescribable objects you're controlling. So, guess what? I think you're this green V. You can shoot at stuff, but you can't move. And that's just fantastic, because there's a big gleaming box immediately blocking your path. I'm not gonna lie. I don't get it. Now, speaking of Tron, here we have Tron Deadly Discs. You just run around throwing shit at people. It seems like it would be a fun little game, but what ruins it for me is how ass the controls are. Rather than having one simple fire button and aiming with the joypad or disc or whatever, the keypad determines which direction you shoot. Shit the fuck! Thin ice. Okay, you're a penguin ice skating around, collecting torches, or they could be McDonald's french fries, who knows. The whole time there's a seal on your ass which kills you, but the black penguins do absolutely nothing. 
Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Well, advanced is right. For the time, it's a pretty complicated game. You start out moving some dots around on the map screen. Then you go into caves, you fight monsters, and find items. What are those, jacks? Can I pick them up? I guess not. The limited visibility is pretty annoying, and without the overlay or any instructions, I gotta admit, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. But this is one of the granddaddies of adventure games. Alright, what do we got here? Space Spartans? Man, what the hell does that mean? A Spartan in space? Was Marvin the Martian a space Spartan? You got this grid screen and you shoot shit, which looks like TIE fighters. Microsurgeon. The picture reminds me of Slim Goodbody. And I can't believe I'm making that kind of reference. But anyway, you control a barely visible dot on the screen moving around the human body. There's spiders and clouds floating around and... I doubt this thing's medically accurate. You just explore all the guts, technically making it the goriest game ever made. But it only goes so far. Guess the piss and shit zone just didn't do it. Frog bog. You're a frog, and the goal is to eat as many flies as you can. It's the same thing as frogs and flies on the Atari 2600, but the graphics are way better. On Atari, the flies are just flickering dots. However, it's more fun to play because of its fluent control. It's a fine example of better graphics don't make a better game. Buzz Bombers. Now, this is funny. You kill a bunch of bees with bug spray, but no, you don't use a can of bug spray. You are the can of bug spray. There's also a hummingbird you can shoot at, but it doesn't seem to do anything. You know when bees sting you? Their asses break off and they die. Space Hawk. Man, everything begins with space. So you're just a guy floating around space shooting green slime. Uh-oh, uh-oh, the bubbles are coming. Gotta find the- Ah! Mother of a fuck! It'd be so much easier to move if you could just use the disc. Instead, it's the damn keypad. Uh-oh, here comes the Space Hawk. Gotta move, gotta move. Damn! I wiped my ass on this game. Boxing. Okay. Yeah, boxing. This sucks. Snafu. You have to keep the line going as long as possible without touching the other lines or hitting your own. It's the bare basics of graphics, but surprisingly, it's a pretty fun game. Okay, now we gotta move on, but let me introduce the IntelliVoice Voice Synthesis Module. What the fuck is that? Well, it makes your games talk. Yeah, now at the time, the idea of having voices in video games was a new thing. But unfortunately, only a few games were compatible, like B-17 Bomber. Mattel Electronics presents B-17 Bomber. B-17 Bomber. Bomber. All right, fuck the game. Let's try Bomb Squad. Mattel Electronics presents Bomb Squad. They'll never do it in time. The code, the code, figure out the code. What? Guess I gotta defuse the bomb. It won't be easy. Replace this third, this oh. fourth, this second, this first. Oh shit! Oh shit! What's that? A metamorphic stone rising from the blackness and negative Earth? A towering behemoth of monstrosity brought down by extraterrestrial powers? Or a giant monolith of death hell-bent on the annihilation of humankind, time, and all matter? No, it's the AC adapter for a ColecoVision. <sighs> what the fuck were they thinking? Is this necessary? Look, I can't fit this godforsaken piece of shit in the electrical outlet, unless there's nothing next to it. What a fucking hog. That's what it is, a self-indulgent glutton of a power hog. Anyway, the ColecoVision was released in 1982, and like the Intellivision, it had the same stupid-ass keypad, but with a joystick. Well, almost a joystick, and it's so stiff it doesn't fare much better. First, let's try out Montezuma's Revenge. Well, I would make some comment about diarrhea or something, but it's actually a pretty good platforming game. You collect a bunch of treasures while avoiding all kinds of hazards. Standard stuff, you know, but well done. Only problem, this controller is fucking horrible! But the good news is that unlike the Intellivision, you can unplug the controller and swap it with an Atari or a Sega Genesis controller. Who would have thought that would be compatible? But what a great thing. Now let's try Rocky. That's right, Rocky on the ColecoVision. 
The music and the graphics are quite good for the time, but would it be too much trouble to add any facial features? As far to my knowledge, your only opponent is Clubber Lang. After all, Rocky III was the newest movie, so there's definitely no Ivan Drago. But all you do is mash buttons and it all boils down to a big crock of shit. Okay, you're not gonna believe this one. It's called Cabbage Patch Kids Adventure in the Park. It's basically like another pitfall game, but with a random layout. Why would I swing on the vines when I can hop on the lily pad instead? Then there's screens which don't have anything on it. So what's the point of having them? And so many of them look the same. Next is Campaign 84. Yes, a game based on the presidential campaign. Probably the worst fucking concept for any game in history. First, you pick what you want to accomplish. You know, like what kind of serious issues there are in the country, like ban all shoelaces. And that's my favorite, because shoelaces are bullshit. Then you pick the donkey or the elephant, and I don't really know which is which. And then you're moving around, and I really seem to be having a lot of trouble with this because I can barely move. Alright, let's try to touch the megaphone, okay? You were seen putting your shoes on before you put on your pants. Okay, well who the hell was watching me get dressed? If I want to put my shoes on first, that's my own goddamn business. Next up is Chuck Norris. Yeah, that's right, Chuck Norris the game. You're walking around and then you get into fights and the attacks are completely ineffective. Come on, you son of a bitch! Wow, this is shit. Next we have Dance Fantasy. Okay, well my first question is where's the music? And what the hell am I trying to do? You're just like floating around. It's as much fun as dragging a mouse around a computer screen. Dr. Seuss's Fix Up the Mix Up Puzzler. It's a puzzle game where you put together different Dr. Seuss characters. Yeah, that's about as much as I can say about that. Learning with Leaper. It's one of the most juvenile games I've ever played. You're a weird eyeball with legs, and there's four little games to pick from. In the balloon game, all you gotta do is match the letters. It's pretty hard, right? In the maze game, you're a frog being chased by a centipede. All you gotta do is get to the end of the maze, and that's it. The dog game, I have no fucking clue what to do. But the paint game is basically like an old paint program. If you thought Mario Paint was primitive, well, look again. Next is looping. Here we go. Oh, uh, let's try again. Oh, man, that pilot's drunk as shit. Oh, I gotta get through the wall. Here we go. Okay. Maybe I gotta go over it. Oh, I guess not. Uh-oh, let's try again. Oh, man, what am I supposed to do? Fuck! Oh, I know, I gotta shoot through it. Robin Hood. I guess you're Robin Hood and you're just shooting the fuck out of people with your arrows. Man, all this violence going on, but the sun is just smiling away. Smurf Rescue. Yeah, how could you go wrong with a game about the Smurfs? All you do is keep walking right. Nobody's trying to kill you. Everything's just fine and dandy. What a nice game. This is the happiest game ever made. War Games. I'm assuming it's based off the movie since they both came out in 1983. You're basically trying to stop nuclear missiles from blowing up the whole world. It's kind of serious. But there's another one called War Room, which is a similar game except this one has some comedic relief because it's got giant mutant chickens. Alright, well, this video is getting out of hand, and we can spend all day talking about these games and discussing them in depth, but I only wanted to give you an introduction to two classic gaming consoles. Now, I know we mainly focused on the shitty aspects, but let me tell you, that's the name of the game. But before I end it, let's take a look at the ColecoVision expansion module. Yeah, what gaming system is complete without some kind of peripheral? You plug it in, and now you can play Atari 2600 games. That's right, I'm playing Atari on ColecoVision, it's competitor. Okay, that would never happen today. That's like if Sony said, okay, we're gonna come out with this new expansion module for the PlayStation 3. You're gonna be able to play Xbox games on it. There would be lawsuits up the ass. And there were more expansion modules. The second one's a steering wheel for the driving games, and the third one connects the fucker to an Atom computer. I wonder if the Adams family had an Adam computer. Now the fourth expansion module connects it to a dishwasher. And then the fifth and final one connects it to your ass. <laughs>